Hey guys, we wanted to share a Count Your Blessings episode from way back in 2019 where we solicited responses from the listeners and ourselves to share um, five or so of our comics-related blessings that we have. And it was really fun to listen to the listener responses and to hear what you all had to say. It was a really fun time. And we wanted to repeat it, uh, but we didn't get it done in time. So we're going to try to do something fun like this uh, leading up to, to Christmas. And so to kick that off, we wanted to share this with you all and uh, hope you enjoy it. Well, you know what? We got some blessings. Ah, the blessings. Our, les- our listeners have counted their blessings. Uh, we've got a, a nice uh, baker's dozen of blessings here to read from our listeners and um i figured we'd start uh just rattle them off we'll start with you and me go ahead and um if you if you feel feel like you want to go ahead and you you do yours first i'll do mine and then we'll we'll go to our listeners you go first i'll go second okay all right well um my blessings uh were uh were walking dead Uh uh-huh uh walking dead got me into comics so i feel blessed um by the walking dead comic book and tv show and my brother reminding me that or letting me know that it even existed as a comic Mm -hmm. um and then i'd have to go with the new 52 uh i know at the end the new 52 kind of lost a little favor but it but when it first came out it was very exciting to me and really really reignited a passion for uh comics this led to um my third blessing which is image which it, for me is still the greatest publisher and the one that i if i ever finish a comic uh this is who i would want to publish it um and i love most of the stuff that they put out especially this skybound in, imprint there you go uh, um number four on my list is bkv uh discovering brian k vaughn and going down that rabbit hole and reading all his stuff, almost everything he's ever written, and loving pretty much everything he's ever written, and just discovering how good a comic can actually be at the when it's helmed by a really great writer. I think that that I felt really blessed by that. And um, and lastly, uh, digital comics. Uh, there you go. Digital comics have replaced print comics as my comic reading method of choice. Uh, I prefer it. My eyes, my old, uh, older eyes prefer it. I like the colors. Uh, I like the experience on a tablet better than print. I know that's sacrilege to a lot of you folks. Um, but I love, I love digital comics and, um, those are my five blessings. Very good, very good. Um, we do have a repeat between you and I. Oh, um, cool. I also have The Walking Dead on it. How at, in a year where it came to an end, and uh, Kirkman did such a wonderful job with the way it ended, and how you and I have a history of that comic being uh, very much joined to uh, us mm-hmm. getting back into comics. Um, that was one of the first things that came to mind, especially with just me putting a, a final touches on some of my, my boxes of Walking Dead and stuff. It was uh, it was very much fresh in my mind uh, for that. So Walking Dead in its entirety, one of my things. Uh, my second blessing is dollar boxes. <laughs> um, That's great. We had a, an LCS close to us actually move into a new location and actually for the first time in a while put out a lot, a lot, a lot of dollar boxes. And I just really get a kick out of just digging through dollar books just just long box after long box of flipping through things hunting pick pulling something out pulling my phone out doing a quick little cursory search on it and deciding it's not worth it putting it back and and just digging for more stuff i really do enjoy that and that is one of my favorite things in comics is kind of the search and the hunt um and just fun old dollar boxes are one of my favorite things of all time um Another thing I, I feel blessed for, as I'm going to kind of cheat and group a few things, is um, cover artists. My favorite cover artists. I, I really, 
There are times where I don't even read a title, but I have to have that Art Germ cover. I have to have that J. Scott Campbell cover. I have to have um, that uh, Scotty Young cover. And just for me, and for me, finding not only a great book, but with a cover that really I have to have, you know, that that's something I'm very thankful for. I'm thankful that we, we don't just always put generic covers on things or it's not just a repeat of one of the, you know, the, the page six panel, um, that we have people in this industry that pour their heart into soul and just into making, uh, comic books look great and have amazing covers that really attract you to them. Um, another thing I'm, st- I'm thankful for, I'm going to say Star Wars, Star Wars back in comics. Um, I've been deep into Disney plus the last couple weeks <laughs> with it coming out deep into Mandalorian, uh, and things like that. So I'm thankful for also Disney Plus. But just that Star Wars is back in comic form, back in canon form, back everything's grouped with Marvel again. It, it's just, when going through the Disney Plus, it's just neat to see that it's all this Disney stuff, but also the Star Wars world, the Star Wars universe. And I've been steeped in it for so long. So I'm just very thankful that Marvel um, has has put a lot into a lot of the Star Wars books. Uh, through since the merger and since everything and i think we took it for granted for a while that it wasn't there and that i wasn't big into the dark horse stuff unfortunately but as much as i get mad at some of the elongated stuff and some of the worthless stuff with the star wars for marvel i'm very thankful that it's considered canon and i have a place to dig deeper into the lore of that when i get in these kind of moods and things i can run to the marvel star wars section and really see what's there and i'm My last blessing is I'm thankful for this podcast. I'm thankful for the ability to talk to our listeners, to hear feedback from them on a weekly basis, uh, to really keep me grounded into it. I look forward to you and I getting together for a short amount of time, and I really look forward to the feedback from the listeners. That's pretty awesome. That's way way less self-centered than mine was. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) Really good. Um, James Rayner says, uh, number one, The Walking Dead TV show and comic book men show. It's what got me back into the hobby. I love. It, there, there's some a thread here. Uh, Mayo's Comic Book Page Podcast. It's my favorite podcast and introduced me to Drew. Ah, uh, thank you. Uh, in, introduced me to Mike Myers on the Slack channel. Very cool. And allowed me the opportunity to share my opinions on comics. Number three, Jason from Hawaii, who is quite possibly the nicest person I've ever met. <laughs> That's uh, you'll get no argument from me. Yeah. Uh, number four, Eric from Cowabunga. He took the fight to DCBS with even better pricing. He is genuinely a good person. Yep. You again, no no disagreements. <laughs> and number five, my wife who supports me and allows me to spend so much money on this hobby I love. Very cool. Uh, Samurai Godzilla says, Usagi Yojimbo, Savage Dragon, Jeff Lemire. Mark Wade, comic book stores, and cons. Mm. Uh, you can put six on there. You, you're allowed. You, I like it. Yeah. Uh, have at it. That's it. Comic book stores and cons are, are pretty good. Got some of his favorite books, creators, and just other things that yep. really keep him in there. X Men Patrick says X Men Reboot, number one. Uh, number two, Mad Cave Studios. All right. Nice. Number three, great podcasts for comics. Cool. Number four, John Mayo and James for sl- the Slack channel. It is my favorite. It is my local comic chatter. And number five, Immortal Hulk. Very cool. Uh, Marvin did one. Said Marvin says, I'm just going to do one. That blessing is my friend. Almost 25 years ago, my friend John, almost 25 years ago, my car broke down in the country on my way home. This is pre-cell phone. It looked like I had a bit of a walk ahead of me and this and then this guy named john rolls up and offers me a ride he has a stack of comics in a bag on the bench seat of his small truck we strike up a conversation since i am also a comic reader too all these years later because of his kindness and those comics we are still friends at some point my first wife and i divorced it was a dark and difficult time and john let me move in with him this may seem like a stretch however Without those comics, we would have never talked again. Those comics gave us some common ground, and now we're lifelong friends. Wow, man, that's that's pretty amazing. That's cool. 
That's really good, Marvin. Thank you. Uh, Aaron Churchill says, number one, comic book podcast. These are a great way to interact with the community and know you are not alone. Man, high school wasn't fun in the late 80s, early 90s for comic book lovers. <laughs> Especially ones like yours that bring the community to your podcast. I really like the Comic Conspiracy podcast and the Contest of Challengers podcast. I'll check those out. Uh, number two, the stories and art. Seems bl blindingly obvious, but at its foundation, that's what we are here for. Uh, number three, DC Comics having DC Superhero Girls started coming out right as my daughter was born, and she loves them. What a great way to get your child into comics and reading. Also, DC characters were my favorite and still are, so it's the characters I grew up loving. Selfish, but true. Uh, number four, comic book conventions. Meet the people who bring us so much joy week in and week out. You get to shake their hand and say thank you for the decades of joy or the week of joy, depending on your their career length. <laughs> Either way, how many times in life do you get to thank a person directly that's brought so much joy to you in your child's life? My daughter got to meet, shake hands, and get a picture with Judd Winnick at C2E2 three or four years ago. She loves his Hilo books also came out the year she was born so he's on the same book number as the age of my daughter kind of cool that is kind of cool also my daughter likes jill thompson's the little endless storybook she got a destiny drawn in her book and got to meet and get a picture with jill so incredibly cool also i used jill's kickstarter to commission a picture of my daughter in supergirl's dc Superhero Girl's costume with Streaky the Supercat, uh, a New York Times bestselling author that charges hundreds or thousands of dollars for commissions, did one of my daughter for a hundred bucks because she was a few years behind on her Kickstarter. Thank you, Comic Convention. Thank you to Comic Conventions. Sorry, that was way too long. <laughs> Number five, my best friend in high school, Chris. There was a local shop in Grand Ledge, Michigan called Fantasy Road. This is long since gone. This guy, two years older than me, got my job, got me my job because I was too young. There are some fun tales about him being intimidated by me because I was aggressively jealous at first. Then I found a kindred spirit and a best friend, and we were able to share a passion and love of something very few people understood at the time. See the high school story above. Uh, I was a geeky, introverted kid that desperately needed a friend to connect with. Without comics, I never would have met and connected to my best friend. Man, these are awesome. Yeah, you, no guys, you guys are freaking amazing, making me cry. Um, Mo Walker, uh, who's Dr. Mo on the comic book page Slack and forums. Uh, number one, Jonathan Hickman's breathing life into the X-Men line, courtesy of House of X and Powers of Ten. Starting to, I'll, I'll get that eventually. Powers <laughs> of Ten. Number two, a new Legion of Superheroes series brought to you by Brian Michael Bendis and company. Number three, Titan Comics handling of the Robotech property. Yeah. Number four, more Boom Studio titles. More Boom Studio titles landing on my pull list. Once in Future, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Angel, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, and The Magicians. Uh, number five, watching artists like R.B. Silva for Powers of Ten, Jorge Jimenez for Justice League, Jamal Campbell for Naomi and Far Sector, and Pepe Larraz for House of X, Dan Mora on Once in Future, and Alvaro Martinez for Justice League come into their own to produce, produce phenomenal artwork this year. Excellent. Thank you, Mo. Glenn Clark, who's blessed by his L LCS. Most people either love or hate their local comic shop, but the fine folks at the Tangled Web in Spartanburg take customer service to the extreme. About six years ago, I had congestive heart failure and was in the hospital for a week. Uh, on new release day, the comic shop owner came to see me with my weekly pull list, plus a few extra trades to keep me occupied and my mind mind off the situation. Sure, I could use a mail order service and get books for at a better discount, but you won't find customer service like that through the mail. I know you asked for five, but this went a little long, so I'll leave it at just one. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, Glenn. That was wonderful. Uh, Paul Keen. I hope hopefully he's hopefully he's doing good. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul Keen, sometimes known as Bronze Age Paul. Uh, number one that I have 
three almost grown kids who enjoy comics. Maybe not as obsessively as I do, but all of them read them from time to time. Number two, that it's a hobby I can enjoy for the simple pleasures of reading, the fun of collecting, and even in a small way, investing. How many other hobbies can you do that? Number three, the relationships I have built. Store owners and other dealers, fellow fans, etc. I've been able to meet great people in person, but also online and share my enthusiasm for the hobby. That includes great podcasters like you guys, where it may only be a one-way relationship, but I still feel like I know you. That's pretty awesome. Uh, Number four, the amazing creativity of comics artists, writers, and other creators. Without them, we'd have no comics, let alone this golden age of movies and TV shows. Everyone who likes comics should agree with this one. Thanks for the opportunity to comment and keep up the great work. Thank you, Paul. That's fantastic. Uh, Professor Allen, number one, says, uh, Dr. Doom has his own book. Number two, The Legion is back. Number three, Alternate Comics produces new issues priced at $1.50. Number four, discount back issue bins. There you go, Kyle. Mm-hmm. Kindred spirit. Um, through And number five, through podcasting and social media, I've gotten to know bunches of cool people and make friends, some of whom I've even met in real life. Uh, Professor Allen does um, a, a bunch of podcasts on his relatively geeky network, and one of them is the Quarterbin content uh, podcast. And he used he used to shop at the same LCS we shop that had the quarterly uh-huh. quarter bin or the quarterly quarter the, sale. Yeah, quarterly quarter sale. And he misses it because now oh, he, so much. He, he was able to. He he was talking on a podcast about how he was he was able to um, fill the void a little bit. With like ha- at like half price books and world's greatest, mm-hmm. but they're now their quarter bins are gone, and so he's worried about having to rebrand his podcast since he can't actually find a quarter quarter bin. And his podcast is called like uh, the quarter bin podcast. So dating himself with that, they don't exist. They, yeah, he's having trouble. He's having trouble keeping up with his brand. So um, yeah, check check out the um, relatively geeky network and, and all his podcasts. They're pretty awesome. Um, John Abel. Uh, since his blessings. Number one, comic podcasts. Reading comics uses two sides of my brain and hearing about comics uses the third side. <laughs> I don't know that that's scientifically true, but okay. <laughs> what a buzz, he says. Uh, number two, online comic shopping. I'm thankful I can order any comic I want and have it delivered to my door without having to dig through grubby long boxes. How dare you? <laughs> well, wait. Number three, Spending hours digging through grubby long boxes. There you go. Okay. What can I say? I actually love it. (laughs) (laughs) Number four, Mice LCS, winner of the 2019 Harry Creamer Award for the Canadian the Canadian Award for Outstanding Comic Retailer. Very cool. And number five, Joelle Jones. More please. (laughs) Man after my own heart. There. Um, That's very cool. And our final blessing comes to us from our very own uh, Jason from Hawaii, Jason Kim. Uh, Number one, I thank God for my wife, Dawn, who supports my crazy expensive hobby from Mm. buying comics to going to conventions. P.S. We don't talk about how much money I spent at the 2019 (laughs) Amazing Comic Con that had George Perez, Jim Starlin, and Neil Adams. And don't forget the crazy amount of money that you spend sending uh, unsolicited gifts to... uh, uh, friendly podcasters around the country, um, which is very, he's very nice at that. We always, we always enjoy our Christmas gifts. Mm-hmm. Um, number two, for my, for my friendships with you, Drew and Kyle and John Mayo and James um, and Eric from Cowabunga and Lucas and Randy, the coners of Dragon's Lair, for you, Drew and Kyle and John for letting me contribute to your podcasts. And number four, for we comic book fans live in a time where we have so much comic book TV movies that are really well made and successful that are loved and, and even criticized. And number five, I thank God I was finally able to meet my favorite artist, George Perez, before he retired. And that is cool, Jason, because you got in right under the wire. I think he was at the last, might have been the last pod, uh, last con he ever went to mm-hmm. before he retired. So, yeah, that was cool. Uh, the, guys, um, you really outdid yourselves. Uh, I want to thank you, listeners, very much. Uh, these were wonderful, um, and you did a really fantastic job. And 
we are really really blessed by the comics that we get to hang out with and read and enjoy it's, this was really fun and um thank you guys for for playing along with this it was this was great absolutely sometimes we get stuck in the rut of complaining about you know marvel shenanigans or the lcs things we don't like or a price we don't like or books coming out late and things like that but um if this industry wasn't a blessing and i didn't enjoy what we do and in, in, in the medium uh, i wouldn't do it so it's good to continue to remind ourselves yeah. that uh, there, there's awesome things here that really inspire us each and every day to um enjoy their creativity and hopefully spin it out into our own cre- creativity as well yeah good stuff guys uh thank you